Today on Addicted to Gear, we're taking a look at this Epiphone SG. Stay tuned. Like so many things out there, you just kind of naturally gravitate towards certain things. For me, it's been Telecasters, Stratocasters, and Les Pauls. And the SG, although it's always been on my radar, has been one of those elusive guitars that I never managed to find the one that convinced me to change my mind. I'm not gonna deny it, Epiphone's been making some really killer guitars, especially the inspired by Gibson line. I purchased a 335 guitar, which I reviewed not that long ago. And um, I think a lot of you agreed with me uh, when I said the guitar was great bang for the buck. So today I'm here to see whether or not the SG is just as good. Now these guitars retail for about $729 at the time of recording in Canada, not including taxes. So it's a pretty decent price for a well-built guitar. And my initial impression of this guitar is that it is indeed well-built. Now I went for the version with the trim because I, I never actually tried one on an SG and I wanted to see whether or not it would actually be useful, hold up, do what it's supposed to do. I don't have very many expectations because I don't know whether or not it even works well, but we're gonna find out in the video. The rest of the guitar is pretty much all SG, the color, the features, you know, the two humbuckers, the way the knobs are all clustered together, the pick guard, as well as the inlays. So if you're an SG fan and maybe just can't afford a Gibson version, um, based on looks alone, this might actually scratch that itch for you. Pretty much identical guitars in terms of looks. Now, one of the things that I noticed on the early models was that the matching of the veneer top and the sides where the carve was made wasn't extremely well done. I've seen some versions of these guitars where you can really clearly see that the top is a veneer and where they actually made the carve, it actually was like a pretty substantially different color. Now, I think they're getting a lot better this one in particular doesn't, you don't really see it all that much. Um, at least your eye doesn't go to it. The back is also a veneer. You can see there's nice grain in the back, um, but the sides are not, right? Because you can't go over the little chamfers here. But unless you're looking for that, you won't really notice it. And I think that's great because the early models, mm, weren't so so hot in my opinion. One of the cool things uh, about the tremolo that I like is the way it looks so vintage. It even has a, a really nice carved in, um, I don't know if it's a lute or a harp, but it's a really nice design and it has the Epiphone name on that. And um, it's a nice little feature. The quality of the metal seems pretty nice. It doesn't seem like it's extremely cheap. And when you actually use the trim, I mean, it's not gonna flap around on you. It's definitely, it gives you some really nice resistance. Whether or not 
it comes back to pitch and all that kind of stuff remains to be seen. Let's continue talking about the features, shall we? One of the things that I never liked about the SG is the way that the knobs, the tone and volume knobs are clustered together really close. They're not as far apart as you would normally find on a Les Paul. And honestly, when you put in the jack, it kind of, it, it's kind of hard to, to get your hands around. So now you have all the knobs and the jack kind of in the same place. If you want to use the knobs closest to the jack, you kind of have to do it in a weird way. Um, it's not as intuitive and uh, ergonomically friendly, uh, if you want to put it that way, as the Gibsons are. And in my opinion, that's one of the shortcomings on this guitar. Now, as far as the feel of the knobs, they feel quite good. The switch seems to work well. Uh, this guitar is indeed made in China. It does have a crafted in China sticker in the back of the headstock. I mentioned many times before, I'm not necessarily a cork sniffer. I don't really care where a guitar is made as long as it's made well. And I do believe that the guitars that are being made overseas today have the ability to be made just as good or even better than some of the guitars that we can get here. Uh, one of the great features of the new Epiphone is the newly designed or reintroduced headstock design. Uh, these are great. I was never a fan of the larger Epiphone headstocks. Now with these headstocks, I'm actually, you know, I'm drawn to these guitars now a lot more than I was previously. So the headstock does have the Epiphone writing as well as the crest and a really nicely done truss rod cover, nothing too extravagant. They're staying true to the classic Gibson look. The tuners here are tulip style tuners with the plastic uh, knobs. I like these tuners. I know a lot of people don't. They prefer to have the chrome knobs. The guitar also has a nut that is not made of bone, but it's well done. I don't see any issues with the nut at first glance. Um, bone would have been nicer, but maybe that's something that you can do eventually as an upgrade to your guitar, should you choose to buy one of these. So we're gonna be taking a look at the neck right now. A lot of people wanna know if the neck feels like a real Gibson SG. So, so definitely, has uh, um, a different feel than the Gibsons, in my opinion. The Gibsons somehow feel even slimmer. The shoulders of the neck uh, are a little bit less round, more a little bit more squarish. So you definitely you definitely feel that. But the neck does not feel bulky in any way. It's actually quite nice, and I really don't think you'll mind unless you try a Gibson SG side by side with this one. Whammies don't be long on an SG, <laughs> but I do like the mojo. I like the look. This is what the old ones look like. So if you're looking at a whammy bar in regards to getting something that looks like it was, you know, the, the vintage style bridge and whammy, this is it. You, you definitely have that here. Is it a type of whammy system that I would go for today? Uh, if it was based on looks alone and mojo, I would probably go for it, but if it's based on functionality and I'm thinking, you know, thinking about doing like dive bombs or anything with this, forget it. It's not really designed for that. And I wouldn't even call it a true whammy bar. It's kind of just like a, a wiggle stick. I mean, it works. It's nowhere near what you're gonna get with a modern bridge. Let's face it, guys, it has its own limitation. All the thing is really is a bent piece of metal with a retainer piece of uh, metal that basically holds your strings in place. And you're just basically flexing the metal and hoping that it comes back to the right position. One of the things that I noticed and I'm gonna show you is that when you do flex the arm, 
the uh, post does move. It doesn't stay absolutely still. It does flex a little bit. And I, I'm not surprised to see that since, you know, it's basically uh, a system that is not necessarily the most modern design. So what does that mean long term? Well, it might wear out your posts. There might be other complications in the future if you use it a lot. But I think that most people that are buying this guitar uh, probably won't use the whammy all that much. You also have to consider that the Vibrola is about $100 more if you're buying the model with it. So you really have to think long and hard whether or not you know, you're buying it based on looks or functionality. So the pickups in this guitar are Epiphone Probucker pickups, not super hot, which I prefer. You're about 8.9 in the bridge and 7.4 in the neck, which is pretty much standard for, you know, more vintage flavored pickups, in my opinion. And I think they do a good job. They're respectable sounding pickups. I don't feel a need to rip them out right away. You can work really well with these and uh, they made a good choice. So one of the things I don't like about SG guitars most of the time is that they tend to be neck heavy. This one is also a little bit neck heavy, but it's not extreme where it's gonna immediately take a dive on you. But you can, you can see that the center of gravity is not that well centered if i take my hands off the guitar it, it it will it will dive i'm glad i have fast reflexes and caught that you see what we do for you guys we risk everything the fretboard on this guitar is not ebony or rosewood it's indian laurel it could stand a little bit of hydration it seems to be a little dry and these necks with indian laurel tend to uh, require a little bit of oil treatment to darken them up a little bit some are lighter than others this one is not extremely light which is good there is a couple of inconsistencies or little areas that seem to be a little bit darker one of the things I love about these guitars is the access to the frets. You have no hindrance at all when you're playing up right here. You can actually bend the notes all the way at the last fret. I don't think any other guitar is as easy to access your frets all the way up the neck like an SG and that's one of the things that I really like about these guitars uh, and a lot of people do because they're just really easy to do whatever you need to do all the way up here without any trouble at all nice so if we look at the back of the guitar the neck is a one-piece neck there's no scarf joint up here um, the neck is pretty thin up here. I don't know if we would have to worry about the neck snapping off like some of the uh, bigger brother issues that we're uh, always seeing crop up on the internet. A lot of people snap off the headstocks on the older Gibsons. I'm not sure if uh, the Epiphones would uh, have the same issue. I'm not really willing to drop the guitar for you guys to find out. So that's something you're going to have to find out for yourselves the hard way. So Gibson is using a lock tone bridge on this guitar as a standard uh, issue hardware. The lock tone bridge doesn't look any different. It actually looks pretty much the same, but it's made slightly different. It does have little threads that keep the bridge in place so that it actually stays uh, where it's supposed to be without any issues. Does that make it better or worse than the regular bridges? I don't think you're really gonna hear a tonal difference. Perhaps they selected this bridge because they knew it was going on to the guitar with the vibrolas and maybe they didn't want to have uh, the noise associated with the, the bridge knocking around when you're using it. So the guitar comes complete with a really nice binding on both sides of the neck as well as the little neck plate that sits just between the last fret on the fretboard and the neck pickup as well as a really thick three ply pick guard. One of the things I noticed also on this guitar is that the the Vibrola arm is really rigid. I mean, it doesn't flop around. You can't swing it or anything. It's pretty much 
gonna stay wherever you leave it. Uh, if you have to put this guitar in a case, you have to be aware that this has to pretty much go this way. Otherwise, it's a little bit too tall to fit in a regular case, might cause you problems. There's no way to remove this arm unless you take out the screw, which you don't wanna be doing, so you have to consider that depending on what kind of case or gig bag you're gonna be using for this guitar. I'll give you my honest opinion right here, guys. If you're considering buying one of these because you wanna buy an SG guitar and you can't afford the Big Brother, go for it. I think these guitars are extremely well built. They look and play really nice. And um, the only thing that is stopping me from grabbing one of these is the fact that I don't really get along with the Vibrola. I would prefer to go with a standard setup with a bridge and tailpiece. I just think that it's the way to go with this guitar for me. You might think different and really like the look and mojo of the Vibrola. If you don't mind the fact that you will have some tuning instabilities with this, it's not uh, you know, nearly as good as some of the modern bridges that are designed to be used with a whammy bar that we have access to today. It's based on an older technology, so you have to be willing to put up with a few of the quirks associated with it. But if you like the look, go for it, man. I'm not gonna stand in your way. But for me, it would definitely be one of these models in a standard, tailpiece configuration. I'm pretty certain I'm gonna get one of these eventually, guys. It's just a matter of time. The prices are really good, brand new. They're even better on the used market. You could probably end up snagging one of these eventually for five or $600. At that price, there's no reason why you shouldn't have an SG in your collection. Thank you all for tuning in today. Before you go, please hit the subscribe button to help us grow our channel. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and I'll be sure to answer them. Keep rocking guys, there's more great guitars coming up.